Pastor. It's good to be here again. It was actually six years. We were here in 1994, but he's getting old, you know. So. <laughs> I used to like Brother Maple a whole bunch. In fact, the first time I met him, I fell in love with him. You know, as you as uh, as you probably undoubtedly know, my face has gotten bigger, you know, since, since the last time I was here. And I've always been looking for a certain hairstyle that would go good with a big face. And I, I love his hairstyle. But I, I stopped liking him because I can't get my hair to look like that. You know? So I just booey on that, you know. But uh, it is good to be back with you again. Uh, for m most of you know us already, but for those of you who do not, this is my wife, Isabel. Amen. She is the wind beneath my wings, and uh, I have a 17-year-old son, Fabio, 8-year-old daughter, Jessica, and a 1-year-old uh, son, Jeffrey, going on 16, I think. He's, he's, uh, he's the youngest, but the wildest, and, uh, but he's a good boy, and uh, I can't wait till he's, if the Lord Terry's coming, he's old enough to show me how much strength he actually has. But. Uh, Folks, I want to uh, share with you real quick a bit of my testimony, if that's okay, before I start tonight. Uh, I was saved in uh, in 1971 when I was six years old at a vacation Bible school. And and, and folks, I, I, I'm, I, I, I want to start it this way because I, I, I want you to do me a favor. I want you, when you pray for these missionaries this week, you remember to pray for the kids. Amen. Because they do not understand what mom and dad are doing. They're just going with them. All right? Well, anyway, when I was six, about uh, about a month or so after I was saved, my father came to me, Bill Horton. He said, John, uh, we're going to Brazil as missionaries. I didn't know what that meant. I thought I'd be back next week. <laughs> Little did I know. But anyhow, we got yanked up and taken to a foreign country, and uh, believe me, it was foreign. We didn't know anything about anything there. All I knew is that uh, they told me there were monkeys, and I wanted to see a monkey. I got that was about it. But uh, uh, the first church that my dad started in was uh, a little remote town about two and a half hours out of the capital of the state. Now, my state is, is twice the size of Texas. All right, so it's, uh, oh, and uh, by the way, you, if, if you see my car has Florida tags on it, all right, let me just share something. I didn't need a revote. started a small church where my dad did out in a little bee town called Vigia. And uh, ironic, the, the town of Vigia means watchman. That's what that town is. It's a guard. All right? If you were to translate it exactly, it's watchman. All right? And uh, he started holding services in a small house there. And, and uh, I had, like I said, this was all new to me, and I didn't know what was going on. Dad would just say, go out and bring people in, you know. And uh, there were several people who started coming, and we were holding services every week. And some of these uh, became faithful. All right, now I want you to pay close attention to what I'm about to say here. Several of these remained faithful in this church and began to grow spiritually and grow physically, and uh, some of them uh, went on into high school, still faithful, and graduated, and uh, I want to share something very special with you tonight, <clears throat> to show you how that when you give, when you pray for a missionary on a foreign field, you may not always see what's going on. Amen. But one day, uh, you will. Right. Because you helped send the Bill Horton family. 
one of those little good girls that got saved in that first work is today my wife. Yeah. And uh, yeah. folks, that gives me chill bumps every time I say something <laughs> about that. But uh, you can never outgive God. Right. If you had decided not to send Bill Horton, where would I be today? Right. Right. See, folks, you not only affect your life and the missionary's life, you affect many others. Right. You can never outgive God, Amen. no matter what you do. Amen. I'm gonna sing a little quick little song now to get get the spirit back up again. <laughs> and this is by no means a special, but there's one thing I believe is that if you do what the Bible says, how many of you believe that God keeps His promises? Amen. 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 That's right. In fact, in Malachi. God says to try him. God is so adamant about this that he says, try me. Remember how when we were young we'd say, I dare you. You know, everybody, only that person was really nuts would do it, you know. But God is in, in a certain way saying, I dare you. He's saying, try me to see if I don't open the windows of heaven. See, God's desire is to bless you. That's what he... That's what his greatest desire is, is to bless you. Amen. All right, and this is a little song that we learned in the Portuguese language and in English. And I'd like to sing first verse in English and then show you how we do it in the Portuguese language. Unfortunately, uh, oh, by the way, brother, uh, where's he at? To uh, Guyana, uh, right here. How, how much time do you spend in English school, brother? Oh, okay. They, they speak English over there. Okay. We don't speak English. Alright? Okay. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling to God. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave Darkness 
to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Amen. Let's pray. Our most gracious Father in heaven, I come to you this evening, first of all, thanking you for the honor and the opportunity again to open your word and to preach your word. And I pray now, Lord, that you would lead me and guide me through your Holy Spirit, that everything that be said be said through the power of your Holy Spirit. Folks, and I pray, dear Lord, that there be someone here this evening that does not know you as Savior. Lord, that you would not let them turn away this evening without first making certain that commitment to you. Father, I pray that there be someone here that you may be trying to, to get his or her attention. Lord, I pray, dear Father, that they would not resist and that they would do whatever you would have them do. Amen. And most importantly, Father, I pray that in everything that's done, this week, that you be glorified. Amen. These things I ask you and thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You know, the Apostle Paul is very special to me. He, he, he had a thorn in the flesh that, that, that God gave him. God didn't make a mistake when, when he was made like that. And God gave him that. Paul many times asked for it to be taken away. But God, in his sovereignty, sought fit not to take it away. And... Uh, and it bugged them, but it, it served its purpose, I guarantee you that. And, uh, and when Paul became converted, when he accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Savior on that road to Damascus, several things began to happen. But first of all, I want you to see one thing. From that first step, he was willing to do whatever the Lord would have him do. And he did not lose his vision of what he was supposed to do. <coughs> Let me tell you something, folks. The Bible Baptist Church in Lancaster here is only here for one reason. Yep. Amen. One reason only. Some of you may be doctors, some of you may be lawyers, some of you may be low men on the totem pole, just like me. But whatever you are, if you're a member of this church, saved by the grace of God, you have one purpose in life. That's right. That's one. We cannot lose that vision. Amen. We have to realize that this church, if you're here and you're a member, then we have one purpose for being here. And, and, and uh, one excuse that I used to always give is, is if God, I can't do anything. I don't have any talents. Well, let me tell you something. You may be a toe on the body of this church. Have you ever tried to walk without a toe? Right. Let me tell you something, folks. God needs everybody. Amen. God wants everybody to be available to Him. And if we will not lose focus of this, then this church and its efforts will go forward. And Paul did not lose these. Paul knew what his goal was. Paul knew what his vision was, even during the time when he was being persecuted. I don't believe there was anybody here tonight persecuted as much as Paul. Right. How many have ever been stoned? I almost did. I've never been so. Alright? Paul was persecuted, but, 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 uh, it, don't get my English mixed up with Portuguese. Uh, but in the sight of persecution, he still didn't lose his vision. When he was facing a king, King Agrippa, who had the power to do like that and, and have him eliminated, if God were to allow it. Paul didn't lose his vision. <coughs> Paul stood face to face with him and said, this is what I'm supposed to do. And that brings us to our text. If we are going to do what we're supposed to do this week, if we are going to make the commitment that we need to make so that these new missionaries can go and so that more missionaries can come and be sent, and so that the missionaries that you support already can continue to be support, and so that you can do what you're supposed to do, so that we, <coughs> excuse me, can do what we're supposed to do, this is what we're going to have to do. How we do it is through faith, promise, giving. Amen. This is what we're supposed to do. 
Amen. And Paul knew this. Number one, first thing we have to do is to open their eyes. Amen. We must open their eyes, folks, because Satan, our mortal enemy, has blinded them. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, that the God of this world, little G, right. hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest what? Lest the glorious gospel of Christ the image of God should shine upon them. Right. Okay, Lord, help me here. Satan has blinded them because Satan knows that this is the answer. Right. Satan knows that. Let me tell you something. Satan may have been a fool for trying to overcome God. Satan is not ignorant of God's plans. That's right. Right. Satan knows what God is doing. And Satan's on the uh, job 24 hours a day. He has no break. All right? He's on a job 24 hours a day to keep this from the minds of people. Right. He blinds them. Mercy. He blinds them through three ways. Number one, he blinds them through the world. He blinds them through the world. Alright? Folks, this world is very attractive to the human body. Right. Alright? And and uh, if you think, if you think for a moment that, that, uh, that uh, you don't have that problem here, well, let me just tell you something. Who won the popular vote? Right. It shouldn't have been that way. Right. It should have been a landslide for George Bush. Right. And, I, and I say that, folks, because the people of this nation have lost its vision. That's right. That's right. Amen. And, folks, we need to realize that Satan knows what he's doing. And Satan, well, thank you, brother. God bless you. <coughs> Praise God. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Satan knows what he's doing. And he's doing it uh, to the best that he knows how. I'm glad I tell you what, he knows how. He knows my weak spots better than I do. Right. He knows. And if we don't keep this in front of us, then, then folks, he can get us sidetracked from what we're supposed yeah. to do. And unfortunately, uh, and, uh, and let, let, let me just share this with you. Do you know why souls are not being saved? Why? It's because this nation can know it's not. <coughs> So it's not being saved, because we've been sidetracked, bro. That's right. We've been sidetracked. That's right. And, and the truth of the matter is that if this church as a whole would do what it's supposed to be doing, but maybe we've got nothing to worry about anymore. The problem is not everybody participates like they can and should. Right. Yeah. But if everybody will, then we will be able to do what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. Satan also blinds them through the flesh. Folks, uh, uh, in Brazil, pornography is rampant. It's rampant. I mean, uh, 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 here, on the magazine covers that you're not supposed to look at, they have white things in front of them. In Brazil, you know, they don't have the white thing. They just leave the magazine open at the magazine stands. Magazines are everywhere. All right? Now, you tell me, you've been trying to work on this person to try to get him to get saved, try to get him to come to church. And on his way to church, he goes by one of these magazine stands. But Satan knows what he's doing. Right. Satan has blinded him. Satan also blinds him through Satan himself, through false religion. Right. Belém, the city that we live in, is the third strongest city in Brazil for Satan worship. Now, folks, I ain't talking about people like Catholics who think they're worshiping God. And I'm talking about people who know who Satan is. You want to know something? The United States is a stronghold for Satan. Right. Satan has blinded these people. Let me tell you something. Have you ever heard of that book written by Harry Potter? Mm -hmm. You know, I was in a Christian home the other day, and the the uh, lady that I was speaking to, she said, oh, my son loves to read now. He's reading this book. Show me this book. And I said, well, do you, do you let your, your son read this book? <coughs> well, at least he's learned to read. What do you want me to do? Folks, let me tell you something. Do you know what? I did an investigation on that just because I wanted to know. Since that book came out, there have been 100,000 new additions into the Church of Satan here in the United States. Because it's attractive. Because Satan gives a false sense of power while at the same time with a noose around their neck. Satan blinds them so that they will not see the truth of what this is. In that book, and I'm not uh, 
Harking on that book, I'm trying to get you to see where, the, where we have gone, folks. People are not being saved because we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. Right. It says in there, in a very, in a very subtle way, <clears throat> Jesus died because he was weak. <clears throat> While at the same time blinding him, Satan takes away from what we're supposed to be doing. Right. Satan blinds them. Right. We must open their eyes. Number two, we must turn them from darkness to light. Yeah. I can remember the first time I went hunting with my dad in Brazil. <clears throat> now, folks, you have to understand something about the jungle. That's why I love this, this gentleman here. He said, you can be going to jungle. <laughs> All right? My dad took me 12 years old, first time to go hunting. He said, here's my gun. The 12 gauge shotgun. He said, oh, here's your gun. It'll be your 410. <laughs> okay, let's go hunting. So we're going out there hunting. And, and Dad, I can remember him vividly saying, John, don't get lost. You stay here near me now. Okay, Dad. Well, I was 12 years old. I knew everything, right? Okay, so let's go out hunting. So we're going out hunting. And Dad went over there. I started looking. And all of a sudden, I seen this big tarantula. Big one. <laughs> big one. Right? Big one. And I'm serious, folks. I'm that big. I got my little... 12, get my, my, my little gun ready. I mean, I mean, okay. My first shot, boom! And I walked away. Don't buy a 14 shot. I do it. All right, it walked away. All right. Well, anyway, I'm out there hunting. And, uh, and uh, uh, usually in Brazil, it gets darker on 6.30 every day. Okay, no doubt, same time, none of that. Every day, 6.30. All right? Well, I look at 4 30 and it's getting dark. And uh, see, when you're in the jungle, it gets darker earlier. And this little 12 year old boy thought he knew everything, beginning to realize he didn't. Before you know it, I was lost in a world of darkness. Amen. I'm out there, and I just knew that transfer was come back and get me. <laughs> I just knew it. So, I'm getting worried now, trying to find my way. And when all was at despair, when I realized I was done for, my dad came around a tree with a flashlight. Amen. Folks, what I want you to realize, <clears throat> that flashlight was powered by two C batteries, but it was the most precious light. Oh, amen. I understand. <laughs> Folks, the people that live around you, when you look at them, it may just look like a face. And it may look like that they're happy, but they're in a world of darkness. Right, amen. And they need to see our light. Amen. See, folks, <clears throat> what we have to realize is that when you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, <coughs> the Bible says ye are the light. Right. Amen. Amen. We don't have any choice in the matter. See, sometimes we want to sit over here and say, well, okay, I'm not going to do it, but I'm okay. Folks, ye shall be my witnesses. Amen. Amen. The Bible doesn't say ye can be, ye should be, ye may be. I love verbs. The Bible says <laughs> ye are the light of the world. You know what that means, folks? That we are a witness. Now, you can be a good witness, right. or you can be a bad witness. Right. Right. You can let it shine, or you can hide it under a bushel. Right. But we are a witness. That's right. And what we have to see is that there in a world of darkness, and you may be the only light that they may see. Right. See, folks, <clears throat> my daughter, she's very special to me. She loves to talk to everybody. Talk, 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 talk. <laughs> All right? You want to know what she talks about? Ask the parrot that lives right in our yard. Talk, 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 talk. All right? <clears throat> Did you know she can reach souls that I will never see. Right. Amen. She's my daughter. But if she doesn't do her part, 
She'll be able to reach souls that I will never see. We all have a job to do. Not only by giving, but by doing. We all must do that they may be turned from darkness. And last of all, that they may be that they may receive forgiveness of sins. No, back up a minute. That they uh, may be turned from the power of Satan unto God. Amen. There was a uh, young boy who was saved in my dad's second work in, in Brazil. His name was Marcelo. <clears throat> he was involved in every kind of no good thing you can think of. He was one of those kids that that, uh, and unfortunately in Brazil there's a lot of them where the mom says, you go out and beg so that we can have something to eat. All right? And he was just one of those thousands. He was out there and he was involved in everything you can think of. He was involved in what we call macumba. All right? He had been involved in Satan worship. He was involved in drugs. He was involved, I mean, uh, his language was worse than, 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 than language can ever get. And there was this little nine-year-old girl named Angela. Angel. And she was out witnessing one day. And she said, Marcella, will you come church to me? Uh, all right. He came. See, Satan had a tendency of underestimating the power. Amen. And he came. <clears throat> When he realized the truth of who Jesus Christ is. See, folks, contrary to what most people think, most people have heard the name Jesus. But because of false doctrine and Satan's subtlety, what they know of Jesus is false. That's right. When he was exposed to the power of the gospel, the truth of who Jesus Christ really is, he came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. Amen. A few weeks later, his mom came to the church wanting an explanation. Uh, excuse me, Pastor Bill, what did you do to my son? Uh, he doesn't use the foul language anymore. Amen. He doesn't do the stuff anymore. Amen. He doesn't walk on the street like he used to. He stays home. Amen. Now, what I want you to see. That little nine-year-old girl didn't have a course in theology. Amen. That little nine-year-old girl didn't have a doctorate degree. Amen. She knew where the power was. Amen. You know what happened to him? Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the power of gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God Amen. and the salvation. Amen. Folks, if we will but do what God wants us to do, God doesn't expect you to do more than you can do. All he wants you to do is to be available. Amen. The Lord, here am I, use me. That they may be turned from the power of Satan unto God. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 4, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Now, folks, we have to keep our swords up. Right. But it's not us who's going to fight for us. Right, yeah. Jesus Christ who lives in us is greater than he that is in the world. Yeah, if we will lean on him, do what we're supposed to do the biblical way, the people will be turned from the power of Satan unto God. Yeah. Why? Why did Paul know this? Why must we do this? <clears throat> the Bible says that they may receive forgiveness of sin. Without the forgiveness of sin, folks, Nobody gets to heaven. That's right. Amen. Do you know what the difference is between me and someone who's lost? I am a born again sinner. He is not. That's right. 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 Without forgiveness, without the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ, who paid my debt, <coughs> that I may go free, that I may Amen. serve him out of freedom that I may serve him because I want to that he forgave my sin without that there is no entrance in heaven Amen. 
Hebrews 9.22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. Why that? Why that? <coughs> that they may receive, that they may have an inheritance. Mm-hmm. Folks, you know what that inheritance is? Let me tell you something. I was in the, I was in the city of Salvador one day, Bahia, Bela, I mean, uh, Salvador, Brazil. And you can look in this, this guy's map. He has a good map there. You'll be able to find it. The stronghold, number one stronghold of Satan worship in Brazil. And he was showing me, this Catholic guy was saying, come and look at my church. Come look at my church. So I come and walk in this church. Huge. First thing I did was look up. And up, they have three huge fruit baskets. The pineapple in the middle, which weighed 60 pounds, was solid gold. <coughs> Everything on the walls were covered with gold. He was like, see this right here? This right here was handmade by the slaves when the slaves were here and covered with gold. Look at the floor. Granite. Look at this. He was showing us the most beautiful arms. Now folks, you may not have that splendor and glory, but you have a church that honors God. Amen. Amen. See, folks, what is religion worth without life? And what is life without God? Folks, our inheritance is forever with God. And we may think about the streets of gold. That's That's just what we can decide. Our inheritance is eternity with our Father. You know what hell is? You ain't got to worry about the fire. Uh-huh. It's eternity without God. Right. This world doesn't fall apart because God is in control. People say, "Well, you know, uh, this country is going to be gone, gone." I mean, with all the cars, with all the, uh, with all this and that, we're going to, we're going to pollute the. You don't have to worry about it. this world's going to end. And God wants it to end. Right. Right. What we need to be worried about is getting the gospel out. Amen. They may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance. Now I ask you this evening, are you going to do your part? See, we need churches like yours. Every one of these missionaries need churches like yours. But if I may speak so boldly, you need us as well. Because see, you can't go to Brazil. And I can. I can't go to Lancaster. But you can. Amen. Amen. Think of what we can do together. Amen. Amen. Amen.